Hi, this is Michael Buckoff from BetterTofuscores.com, and today uh, I am speaking with one of my English 101 students. Uh, her name is Amen, and she comes from Hong Kong. And uh, the purpose of this interview is, believe it or not, I discovered uh, a few classes ago that she's an international student. And she did take the TOEFL a few years ago, and she took the uh, computer-based TOEFL score, and uh, her score was 230 points out of 300. On the listening section, she had 24 points out of 30. On the structure and writing section, she had 23 points out of 30. On the reading, she had 22 points out of 30, and uh, her essay rating which was part of her structure writing score was 5.5 out of 6 so she was extremely really really advanced uh, in her writing skills and I can also say as uh, as her composition instructor of English 101 it's it's been uh, my joy to read her papers she has uh, very organized uh, writing she has a minimal number of errors in there and what most importantly when I'm reading her essays she doesn't make a lot of what I call non-native speaker type errors she makes a few errors just like my normal students do but she has a good grasp of the vocabulary of the language she has a good understanding of how to structure uh, her sentences and her essays she's a pretty good critical thinker and so on and so forth so in the first part of the interview I want to ask a uh, hey man I, I want to talk to you a little bit about your background about your English study before you were in the United States and why you wanted to take the TOEFL in the first place. Hi, my name is Eamon. I come from Hong Kong. And um, the reason why I um, you know, uh, take the TOEFL test is um, I would like to study in the United States. Um, so I took the TOEFL test and um, actually I learned uh, English uh, since I studied the, element, um, the kindergarten and then um, I remember that when I studied in primary school uh, my mom um, also sent me to uh, study English in uh, the you know some English learning classes and that's why I have a lot of opportunities to learn English and then um, also uh, because this is really my dream to come to the States to uh, to continue my education and I know that um, the TOEFL test that I have to take in order to come to the States to continue my education so this is my motivation that I have to take the TOEFL test Yeah, so it sounds like, like a lot of students that I interview, uh, you have a fairly long history of studying English. It's not something that you've done in just one week or one month. Uh, all right, thanks for sharing that. Now, uh, a lot of people in my audience, uh, um, my audience at uh, BetterTofelScores.com, uh, they might not know what 230 means, but to break it down to some of you guys, in terms of the TOEFL IBT score, a 230 would probably give her a TOEFL IBT score between 90 and 100. So she has a pretty high score. And what I like about her is it's not she's not just a person who scores high on a test, but she applies her English in speaking and writing situations. So she's doing very well as a university student uh, here at California State University, San Bernardino. All right, now let's get into some questions, beginning with vocabulary. Now, it doesn't matter if it's the TOEFL computer-based test or the TOEFL internet-based test. It's all the same. you got to have vocabulary. I mean, that's a fact. So that's my first question. What are some suggestions of things that you think are important for students who are preparing for the TOEFL test right now? What can they do to help improve the vocabulary of college-level English so they can do two things? One, they can get a high TOEFL score, but two, they can succeed at an American university or a university in Australia or England, and they can do well because they have that foundation of English, which is vocabulary. 
Well, um, talking about how I learned some、uh, vocabulary.、Uh, first of all, I remember that when I studied in secondary school, my English teacher、uh, taught us is、um, when we see some new vocabulary, just use the notebook and write it down, and then、uh, just write down if. This word is noun, adverb, or adjective, and also the like a、um, example sentence, and also、um, how we can use this verb, something like that. And actually, it's really useful. And also, one more thing is, I used it to send an email to my f- Chinese friend、uh, in English. I don't use the, you know, I don't use to、uh, type the Chinese characters to to them.、Uh, in that case, I can, you know, sometimes if I don't know some words that I I want to express myself, my feelings, then I will look up the dictionary, and at that time I can learn some vocabulary. And also one more thing is. Uh, I know that、um, Professor Bakov,、uh, he has a website that、um, he has some vocabularies that we can download it. And actually, I download one、uh, copy from it, and it is really useful. So I think、um, uh, if we can spend some time to read that、uh, vocabularies, and it's really helpful for our TOEFL test. Yeah, thanks, Amen, for your comments there, and. And、uh, I like you. You gave four different tips. Now I hope that my better TOEFL scores audience、uh, understood these tips. She said one: not only is it important to to learn the vocabulary words, but to learn the different forms of these words. For example, if I said the competitive boy competed competitively in a competitive competition, I'm taking the word compete and I'm using it as verb, as a noun, as an adjective, as an adverb. So that that helps. It helps you because you know how to use the word in different situations, whether you're speaking or writing. That was a great suggestion. So,、uh, you also talked about when you're studying vocabulary, try to use example sentences using the word.、Uh, you also talked about how you would send emails to your friends, and you tried to use the word in those emails. And let me break it down for my better TOEFL scores audience. What she's saying is. Even though she didn't say it directly, she's saying that it's important to use vocabulary in authentic contexts, and that's how you learn these words. And finally, the point I do, and many of my TOEFL students, a lot of these people have already downloaded this list. In fact, about 40% of the people who go to my website actually download the college level 1700 vocabulary list. So I'm hoping that a lot of these students are studying these words and they are increasing their vocabulary because I'm telling you. If you have a good vocabulary, you will do much better not just on a TOEFL test, but in university classes in which English is the principal language. Okay, our next point: grammar, grammar, and more grammar. Unfortunately, when you took the CBT,、uh, you didn't do so well. You got a lower score on your structure, but your writing was good, and I think that's the most important thing. Is you got a 5.5 out of six on the TOEFL writing. Now the grammar, the structure part was not as high, but what it tells me is, is you didn't do as as well on the ABC multiple choice grammar questions. But when it, when it comes to actually writing the essay, creating your thesis statement, developing it in several paragraphs,、uh, using good sentence style, good subject verb agreement, all of that, you did a great job. In fact, you almost got a perfect score. So the most important thing with grammar, obviously, is to know how to use it. Not just memorize a bunch of structures, but that brings me to my next question. Okay, let me give you some background. Amen. The TOEFL IBT does not have a grammar section. There's no grammar section. However, it says when you go to the TOEFL website and you begin reading about the speaking and writing, it says in order to get a high speaking score on the speaking test, you have to use advanced. Grammar structures with a high degree of accuracy. It also says on the writing you have to do the same thing. You have to use advanced gra- grammar with a high degree of accuracy. So my question is, what are some suggestions 
that you think will help students better prepare themselves in terms of improving their grammar so they can do better on the speaking and writing sections of the test? Well, I'm、um, talking about the grammar.、Um, well, I can suggest that.、Um, well, I remember when I study in secondary school, and if I want to、uh, practice my grammar, that I would prefer to、uh, read the storybook. And as everybody knows, that we are the international student, we are not interested to read those kind of. Thick、uh, fiction English book. We are not interested in it. So I would suggest you guys to、uh, like read the、um, like a very thin story book.、Um, what I'm interested in is the、uh, ghost story, something like a mystery stories that、um, it really helps you to、um, learn the grammars. And if you see some、uh, sentences. That you think that is really useful, I would suggest you to、um, like jot it down in the notebook, so that in case next time you can take that sentence、um, for you know to help you、uh, make a composition or something. Yeah, and and seeing the grammar in the books you're reading again, it's like you're saying a minute ago. You you made an argument, a good argument about how it's important to use vocabulary in authentic context. You're also making good good argument about not just Just studying in a grammar book, like a grammar dictionary, but seeing the grammar in reading passages, and I like the suggestion of maybe writing down some of those sentences that you think are useful. You can kind of steal them. Now, when I say steal, I don't mean in a bad way, but you, you can steal a good sentence that you think is written well, and you can try to use a similar grammar structure、uh, in an essay or something. Okay, let's go on to our our next area. So far, we've talked about vocabulary, grammar, and、uh, and now we're going to talk about pronunciation. Again, the TOEFL doesn't have a specific pronunciation section. However, because it has a speaking section, the TOEFL looks for three key areas of pronunciation. They they want students to have good word stress. They want students to have good intonation. And they want them to pause and blend appropriately. In fact, what they're trying to look for is what's called natural-sounding native speaker-like English. So the goal for students who take the TOEFL IBT, they have to complete these speaking tasks. If they're not really intelligible, and the TOEFL IBT human readers have difficulty understanding what they're saying, they will get a lower a lower score. And this kind of brings me to my next question: Is what types of things do you think would be beneficial for students who want to improve their pronunciation of English, so that when they do take the TOEFL test or they're in an English-speaking university, they will be able to be understood fairly easily by the native speakers? Well,、um, a suggestion、uh, to improve your pronunciation is. Um, well, go to some hotels or some sightseeing points where you can find more foreigners who speak English. That、um, trying to be brave and approach them and trying to offer your help and see,、um, well, if you can show them the direction or something like that, get more chances to speak to them. And then,、um, so that you can improve your speaking, your pronunciation, and I think this is very good idea. And also, one more thing is、um, listen to the radio,、uh, the English channel. That is more.、Um, I think it's also very helpful for you to、um, improve your pronunciation. Also, the TV channel, the English TV channel, uh, especially. Uh, Uh, the BBC or you know this English channels, I think that they have a very very correct pronunciation that you can learn from it. And obviously, speaking with native speakers 
is uh, is an important part of it because without getting the chance to speak English with native speakers, it's difficult to figure out if you can be understood or not. Because the more mistakes you make in your pronunciation, the better you're able to actually improve it. You learn from your mistakes is a saying that we have in American culture. Uh, I got a, a tip I'm going to add to her idea that might help out a little bit is on my blog at bettertoefelscores.com, some of the actual posts, it says listen Listen to this post. There's an option where you can actually listen and you can read at the same time. If you want to focus on pronunciation a little bit, in, in addition to uh, Amen's ideas, you can click on the link, listen to the post, and then read it out loud. You can try to read it with me at the same pace as I read. That way you work on speaking faster and you work on pronunciation or pr pronouncing the different vowels and consonants, syllables uh, clearly, but also accurately and quickly. Because, uh, amen, students who take the TOEFL, if they're speaking too slowly, they're going to get a lower score. Yeah, for example, if it says it'll ask him in a speaking task, it'll say, um, what was a favorite vacation that you went on? And they have 60 seconds to speak about this topic. The problem is, if a student has good pronunciation but says, my favorite vacation is when I went to Beijing for five days. I mean, how long did that just take? That's too slow. The, the person's pausing after every word. So because they're pausing too, too much and they're speaking too slowly, they also get a very low score. So students have to learn to speak quickly. Uh, all right, let's go on to our next topic, listening. Wow, how fast are your ears? I'm asking my TOEFL audience right now, do you have really fast ears? Can you listen to the words coming out of my mouth here? Now, listening. Listening is extremely important for the TOEFL test. I'm going to tell you why. There is a 60 to 90 minute listening section, first of all. Second of all, there is listening tasks on the speaking section of the test. It's called integrated speaking. You have to listen to either academic or campus related passages and then you'll be asked questions about them and you have to speak about those passages even on the writing section of the test. Students, you're going to have to listen to a formal, boring lecture. Yes, it'll be boring, and you've got to listen to it. And that lecture is going to be about three or four or five minutes long, and you'll have to write a 20-minute essay on the lecture, and you have to show how it relates to a formal academic reading passage. So what I'm saying here is, is listening is important for, all th for at least three parts of the test, the listening, speaking, and the writing. And that brings me to my next question uh, for our, our TOEFL student right now. Amen. What are some suggestions that you think would be useful for students to work on their listening comprehension? And I'll give you another tip. Note taking is allowed on the TOEFL IBT on all sections. So what would be some things that you think would be beneficial for helping students get higher scores? And what can they do with listening? Okay, in this part, uh, listening, um, I would suggest like um, also watching TV channel, uh, English channel, and um, I would suggest you uh, switch off the subtitle <laughs> so that you can really focus on what they are talking about, trying to jot down, um, you know, take a um, jot down the words, but of course it's just the note taking and then um, and also um, try to make your own abbreviation works because um, this is impossible that uh, you can write down everything uh, within such a sh you know sh short time. So try to make your own abbreviation that uh, you can understand so um, when you go for the listening test then um, you can you know jot down all those important information and then you can make it <laughs> and I'm always telling my students that a lot of the speakers on the TOEFL test and I think a lot of American professors are like this we speak more than 100 words a minute sometimes 150 
So the speakers on the TOEFL test are not going to slow down for a TOEFL student. So the other problem is, is most students can't write a hundred words in a minute, especially when it comes to note taking. So in my audience here, you guys have to be very good at selecting when you're like Amen was saying, watch a TV program. I like this suggestion, turn off the caption because if the caption's on, you're reading and reading is a whole different skill. You can turn the caption on and you can practice pronunciation. That's a good, it's a good way to practice pronunciation. You can also practice reading a vocabulary, but when the caption's on, you're not practicing vocabulary. So that, that's a good suggestion. Now, what students have to do is, is when you guys are listening uh, to a lecture, you have to determine the main ideas and only the critical supporting points. You must not try to note take the details. The details are not the most important thing that you want to remember, especially for the TOEFL speaking and the TOEFL writing. Because when it tells you, let's say a professor discusses, um, they discuss uh, about mountain ranges or something. And then you have to either speak about mountain ranges or write about mountain ranges. But if you're speaking about it and you only have 60 seconds, you know, you better make sure that you only mention the most important things from that lecture because there's no way you can speak in 60 seconds about everything you just listened to. So part of note taking is separating the, the main idea and then the major supporting points from everything else. And your other suggestion is pretty useful about using some way of abbreviating your words. You shouldn't write words like in, on, and at. Prepositions, you don't write those down in your notes. Instead of writing the word university, you might only write half of the word. You might say UNIV maybe. Instead of homework, you might just write the word HMWK. So you have to be pretty good at developing an effective note-taking system that can help you capture the information that you listen to so then you can answer questions on the listening, the speaking, and the writing sections of the test. All right, let's go on to our next point. My goodness, the speaking section. People can just, they're absolutely fearful of the speaking part of the TOEFL test. It kills so many students. It's very tough section. The TOEFL IBT, I want to explain to my audience for just a minute here, you have six speaking tasks. Speaking tasks one and two are independent speaking tasks. You have to speak for about 45 seconds about personal experience type tasks. What was your favorite vacation, for example? It might say, uh, what do you think is better, studying in the library or studying at home? and then give examples to support your opinion. So those are the first two speaking tasks. Then speaking tasks three, four, five, and six, these are called integrated speaking tasks. It means with speaking tasks three and four, you have to read something and then listen to something, and then you have to speak about it. That's that speaking task. Speaking task five, you have to listen to a campus-related conversation and then speak about it. And then speaking task six, you actually have to uh, uh, listen to a, a lecture and then speak about that. So my question is, speaking is very important for the TOEFL test. Students must speak quickly. They need to organize their ideas very quickly. Uh, what kinds of suggestions in, in terms of speaking do you think would be helpful for preparing these students for the TOEFL test? Well, um, my suggestion about uh, speaking is um, find more opportunities if you can speak to the native speakers so that you will get more practice in your speaking. And one more thing is uh, try to read the English newspaper and then record down what you said and then uh, keep up the speed like uh, native speakers. Um, this is also very helpful. And um, also try to think of any questions that the TOEFL test may ask you so that you can get prepared, you know, you get some key points so that you can easy to map well I will not say to memorize I mean but you can know you know the roughly ideas that what you are going to say if you know the test that they will have those kind of questions 
and you can't you, you, you can't really memorize per se, but I, I think her suggestion is good is most of us know when we're giving a a personal experience type speech that typically you have a topic statement. You might say, My favorite vacation when I was young was when I went to Beijing. And then you can think about, okay, what are two or three reasons why I enjoyed this vacation? So you may say, okay, I have my main idea I state in the beginning of the speech, and then I give maybe three support ideas to support that main idea, and that, that gives you more or less an outline of how you want to progress with the speech. So I think you have a good suggestion where it's important to anticipate the kinds of questions that you're going to be asked on the TOEFL test and practice not only answering these questions, but I encourage uh, my audience to regularly record their voice answering these questions. I think it's important that you, he you, you hear yourself speaking and giving speeches and then you can critique yourself later on and find up op find opportunities of how you can improve uh, your speaking skills overall and uh, your, your suggestion about reading newspapers is also pretty good is is students can get an English speaking newspaper they read the article they take some notes of the main points and the supporting points and then they practice speaking about that article now remember my audience I warn you when you're on the TOEFL and you're speaking about reading passages you don't want to copy the sentences word for word you'll get a score of zero so you have to be careful not to copy sentences and use the exact sentence in your speech you need to paraphrase these ideas you need to summarize these ideas okay that brings us to our next point which is uh, reading the TOEFL test has a lot of reading there is a reading section which is 60 to 90 minutes and these passages are 800 to 900 words long we're talking about eight or nine paragraph essays with college level vocabulary now as I told my audience before you guys you actually have reading passages uh, during the speaking section of the test you also have a reading passage during the writing section of the test the TOEFL the new TOEFL, it likes to combine different types of skills, reading, listening, and speaking, or reading, listening, and writing. The TOEFL is really big on doing that because, let's face it, in a university, you do sometimes have to write about what you listen to or you write about what you have read. These are typical kinds of skills that you have to do as a university student. And this brings me to my next question, uh, amen, reading. So in order to prepare for the TOEFL IBT reading section and to do well on the speaking and the writing sections, what advice would you give students in terms of improve, improving their reading fluency of the English language? Okay, um, about reading, um, again, I would suggest you to read the storybook that you are interested in and then um, also uh, if you have any habits, any interests area that you can find some internet website that um, which is in English so that you can read it and also uh, one more important thing is um, take take down the notes, take down the, the, the information that you think that is very important um, because I know that uh, a lot of TOEFL tests now that not only that you have to um, you know listen to it but also you have to um, jot down the notes so um, the notes taking is also very important and you cannot just copy what is said and you have to Paris face uh, like the whole sentence so uh, the note sticking is also very important and I actually did a video uh, that I posted at YouTube and it's also on a blog it's called paraphrasing summarizing and quoting and it, it, it explains of, of how to do that especially with reading passages on the TOEFL so if you guys haven't watched that video I really do encourage you to do that and I believe in my TOEFL newsletter in one of my newsletters I do make uh, uh, I do post some information and some lessons on how to do that so thank you for your suggestions with the reading amen 
and I agree with everything there. And uh, let's go on to the final section of the test. And I know this has been a fairly long interview. We're going probably about 30 minutes. And uh, I got to tell you, 5.5 out of 6, that's a great score. So for my TOEFL audience, a 5.5 out of 6, that means out of 30 points, uh, on the TOEFL writing, on the internet-based test, her score would probably be right around 28. So I, I think that she has an ability to write well. And, and I can tell you that she's a university student in my English composition class, and she writes well. As I said in the beginning, I've enjoyed reading her essays. She doesn't sound like a non-native speaker in her writing. She has good grammar good vocabulary, good sentence structure, all of that's pretty good. So in the final part of the interview, the question is writing. Now on the TOEFL IBT, there's two writing. There's two essays. The first essay is a 30 minute essay on a personal experience topic. That's similar to the computer based test. The second essay that the, the students have only 20 minutes. They have to read a passage, listen to a lecture, and they have to write 150 to 250 words showing the relationship, how the lecture is related to the information in the reading. And a lot of times on the TOEFL, there is some connection. Sometimes the listening disagrees with the information in the reading. Sometimes the listening gives an example to help explain something mentioned in the reading passage. But whatever the case, there is a relationship between the listening and the reading. And in the writing essay, these students need to show what that relationship is. So in terms of writing skills, for the integrated writing, these students have to be pretty good at reading something and summarizing the main points. And then they have to be pretty good at listening to a lecture and summarizing those main points. But then they have to synthesize. Synthesize means combine information from the reading and the listening, which makes it a, a very tough uh, part of the test. And that brings me to suggestions about writing tips. What are some good writing tips that you recommend that would help prepare students for independent writing and the integrated writing sections of the test? Um, talking about the writing, um, well, it seems that uh, the note taking is very, very important here. And um, I would suggest you guys like do more practice to uh, to take uh, to do the note taking uh, when you what, whenever you read whenever you watch TV or something like that trying to take some notes uh, in order to do more practice about it and then uh, I will also suggest that um, you can find um, a similar essay like about the, um, the current um, news uh, then um, just try to make a summary of that and also find um, like a listening to the radio and then um, um, well if you find any current news similar topic then you also uh, try to make some notes about it and then uh, finally you get to summary then and then you try to combine it together in order to um, like practice your you know exercise or something like that. I just had a final exam in my TOEFL IBT class today with writing and they listened to a lecture. It was talking about an educational policy that people were using uh, at, a, at a elementary school. So they read this reading passage about this policy and then they heard a lecture. The lecture talked about why the policy failed, why it didn't work. And then the question was, it said, how does the information in the lecture challenge the information in the reading? So what Amen's telling you guys is, if, if you want to do well with this type of writing assignment, you have to be able to summarize the main points of the reading and the lecture, and then you have to combine these two sources to show what the relationship is. Now, for TOEFL writing, for integrated writing, it's actually not as hard as it sounds. You simply create a topic statement before you begin the speech. The topic statement says something like this. The topic of the reading passage is blah, 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 and the listening passage relates to the reading 
by or because blah, blah, blah. You want to make sure you state what the relationship is between the two sources in the first paragraph. Now, once you get to the second paragraph, you state the topic of the reading and you state the key points of the reading. Once you're done with paragraph two, you go to paragraph three, you state the topic of the listening, and then you state the important points that were mentioned in the lecture, and you show how it relates to the reading passage. Okay, anyway, uh, BetterTofelScores.com and, and, and me, the founder of Better Tofel Scores, Michael Buckoff, uh, I want to thank Amen for taking the time to talk to my audience uh, about TOEFL. Uh, IBT and TOEFL preparation and uh, I also want to congratulate her on some excellent English skills uh, I've enjoyed having you as, as a student during the uh, um, winter quarter 2009 and actually I can tell my audience that this is actually the last official day of our classes and next week we actually have our final exams and you guys at, at one at one point in your lives you will be done with this TOEFL business. You will get your high score. You will move on to bigger and more important things like getting an undergraduate or graduate degree. Maybe your aim is to get a professional uh, a promotion at your job or something. But trust me, the TOEFL is just one small obstacle. And you will overcome that by following a few simple tips. And obviously, you will do very well after that.